are you a social butterfly or a wallflower more? What would you uh, classify yourself as? I would as? say I'm a social butterfly. As much as I like try not to be sometimes, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to this event and I'm going to be quiet. People are going to wonder if something's wrong with me. Never works. I always want to be like the cool, yeah, mysterious one, but I can never. Ne- like, never works. Yeah. The diarrhea of the mouth just yeah. happens. Friendship should strengthen your family and not weaken it. And they say, oh, we're not artistic. We're not good at it. And I don't really care if they're not good at it. You can slap some paint on a mug. You know, bond over something active at first. And then over time, you're like both there at the coffee shop with your heads in together. And you're like whispering and talking together. Yeah. And you're like soul sisters, you know? Yeah. It doesn't start out that way usually. So- <laughs> Quickly, before we get started with today's episode, I wanted to let you all know that Honey, I'm Homemaker has graduated. Yay! (laughs) We feel like we found our tribe of women that enjoy the podcast, and it's not everybody on my YouTube channel. I started my YouTube channel with a very specific purpose, and Honey, I'm a Homemaker, while I feel it adds to that purpose, it is a very different purpose, and a completely different platform, too. It's a different format. Yes, exactly. So now that we have established, gotten our footing, established ourselves a little bit, we are going to start a, the same thing, Honey, I'm Homemaker is now going to have its own YouTube channel. I will put the link down below. Please click there and subscribe. Even before our next season comes up, we're taking a break here for the month of August and hopefully, Lord willing, we'll be back in September again. But all those videos will be getting posted to our Honey, I'm Homemaker YouTube channel. And we've heard your requests. Quite frankly, we're not sure why you wouldn't want to look at our pretty faces. Deeply offended. (laughs) But we are going to do an audio only version on all of your podcast platforms as well. So you'll be able to find us on Spotify, iTunes, and all the places. Just wanted to get that out there before we get into today's episode. We're excited about it. We feel like it's a good change. And we hope you guys follow us over there. Shall we catch up before we get into today's episode? Yeah, sure. I have two exciting things we could talk about. One, the pap test I got today. (laughs) Or the other, our beach trip that we took this weekend. Which would you like to hear about? (laughs) That sounded pretty rehearsed. (laughs) I feel like you're dying to tell me about one of them. (laughs) So how about you pick, even though I know which one I would pick? Okay, well, I'll just address the elephant in the room. The pap test was completely, like, it wasn't wasn't a non-event. It was simple. The only annoying thing was I waited in the office for like almost 30 minutes and then went back undressed sat in a freezing cold room with a tiny little robe on for another almost 30 minutes for like a seven minute procedure which didn't hurt but anyway it's just such a it feels like such a waste of time but it's done now for another five years did you know that once you're 30 you only have to get them every five years oh i did not i just got mine a year ago after it was a year postpartum and all my friends were making fun of me like why do you need to do that so I think I could have declined, but I feel if I'm going to keep having babies at the rate I've been having, I might as well take care of the machinery. <laughs> I haven't. I mean, <laughs> I haven't had one since 2018. Okay. So I figured it was probably good to do it. And then, yeah, I'm good for five years now. Yeah. So I think them making you sit naked with a robe for half an hour, that's how it always goes. I think it's like a psych evaluation or something. Like, yeah, what are they trying to do? You. They're seeing if you're going to crack. Maybe. Or like, what is going on? Literally, I went for my very first one right when I was getting married. Or maybe I was married a year. And they were like, oh, you have a heart murmur. What? And I said, no, I do not have a heart murmur. I'm just so worked up right now. Oh, really? <laughs> they never found the heart murmur again. That's so crazy. I don't know. It was really odd. But yeah. Yeah, I didn't get one before I was married. They're just... not that bad, but I'm a very private person. So yeah, I don't care. I've had three children. And I still don't look yeah. forward to that at all. <laughs> yeah, I was bracing myself for it to hurt, but it really didn't hurt. It's just uncomfortable, highly uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, how about the beach? The beach was <laughs> really fun. We just went, the four of us, me and Eric and the kids, we stayed one night at a hotel, went to the beach one day, and then just hung out at the hotel till we had to check out the next day. But we went to Ocean Grove, which is God's square mile, our favorite little beach to go to. And the waves were huge. And me and Eric were like out playing in the waves and the boys were in playing in the waves. We could see them and yeah, everyone had a good time. They were so tired. We walked a lot. We swam a lot. We did not sit much at all on the that beach. It was just so too ideal. hot. But like, it was just perfect. We had a little adventure, just us. And I'm so glad we did it. Aw, yes. Wow. There's definitely plus sides for sure to that whole situation. Like a five and a six-year-old. They're five and seven. Five and seven. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. They're so much more independent. We and... have a lot of freedom. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah, man, so fun. We were at the beach, too, with our seven couples and all the children. So that was a very different experience. That was this past weekend. Yeah. 
um, two weekends ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was, as you might expect, <laughs> actually the beach portion was super fun, but I felt like there were seven of us ladies and I don't think we were ever sitting around the campfire together. Somebody was always putting yeah. the baby to bed or dealing with something, you know, it just, it's just the stage of life, I guess. Yeah. It really is. Everybody was coming and going and I don't know. I definitely prefer our girls nights, I think when, but it's good for the kids too. They love it, it. Is, and yeah. the guys connect and can chat around the fire and stuff yeah. too. So whatever. All in the name of summertime, right? Yes. <laughs> anyway, before we get into today's topic, which is actually one that you guys requested, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of not just friendships and why they're important and how to foster them and make them and keep them, but like the social gracious, graces and etiquette and basically like a speech one-on-one class. We're going to try. Yeah. <laughs> of how to yeah just be socially aware um and all that make practical conversation starters and yeah this should be pretty fun and I think we'll be talking to ourselves too so yeah. should be fun but I was gonna say some of these things that I'm gonna say not to do are things that I know I do yeah. <laughs> um so yeah not coming from experts but from women who both live in a very social um area and also that's kind of our lifestyles too we really yeah. appreciate our friendships and stuff so we'll get into all that in a little bit but what is your favorite for this um week or recommendation yes I have a snack that she brought snacks yes I brought snacks um we I I picked this up to take along to the beach and it is a target brand but it is delicious um coconuts it has cashews coconut macaron flavored almonds semi-sweet chocolate chunks and dried coconut eric did not like it at all which for some odd reason just made me love it more (laughs) (laughs) hey no sharing yeah exactly it was delicious i was eating it today and there's the chocolate got melted because we were on the beach but it is delicious and if you go to target you should try it and if you don't go to target more power to you (laughs) oh my goodness okay that sounds so good i have not been into a target in several months so if i ever get in there again i will have to try them i took a break for like six weeks and i recently went back and i think i kind of trained myself or like i don't know sometimes when you take a cleanse from something then you go back and like i don't know i think it curbed some of my spending a little bit it was very good to take a break because yeah i know i used to tell uh, eric when my target bill would come "Eh, it's cheaper than therapy and then the one month's bills came and I was like, um, I should probably just go to therapy because it was so bad. Yeah, I've it's been at least two months for me and I, I will have to eventually go back at some point, but I'm sure I'll take another break next June. Yeah, I definitely go less. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, my less. favorite for this week is not glamorous whatsoever. Um, it's fruit season. It's summertime. We all love it, but... I don't remember this ever happening before. I bought a quart of nectarines and with it, I apparently bought an entire colony of fruit flies. <laughs> they just like swarmed my kitchen. I was like, I tried all of the natural remedies and was Googling things. Anyway, after trying all the frugal Mennonite methods and everything, you know, I just gave up and Josh ordered something off of Amazon. I did not bring it over here because I just feel like it's gross to hold a coffin of bugs. So um, they look like little cherries or tomatoes or something. They sit on the counter and... They attract fruit flies and kill them. I don't know what else to say. You don't have to look at them or anything like that. And it works, most importantly. So I said something about this on Instagram. And it sounded like a lot of other people were dealing with it this year. So I don't know. I thought our house is so cold with the air conditioning at like 50 below that it would have froze them all out. But apparently not. not. (laughs) Yeah, Josh. Josh is in control of the thermostat in our house. But anyway, I will link them below. Not glamorous, but very effective. Yeah. So are you a social butterfly or a wallflower more? What would you... Uh, classify yourself I would as. say I'm a social butterfly as much as I like try not to be sometimes I'm like okay I'm gonna go to this event and I'm gonna be quiet people are gonna wonder if something's wrong with me I'm just gonna be quiet I'm not gonna say anything I'm not gonna say anything stupid I'm just gonna be real quiet and let other people talk and I'm gonna listen I know and be like the cool mysterious never one never works. I always want to be like the cool yeah, mysterious one but I can never ne- like, never works yeah the diarrhea of the mouth just yeah. happens do you feel like you overshare though I I tend to yes I one feel, thing, yeah. I'm definitely a social butterfly too, but I also feel like I have to like make myself be vulnerable sometimes and like actually, you know, admit when I'm struggling with something or like a weakness. Um, but that's really important for sure because then that's how you get closer to your friends and makes them feel like they can be vulnerable too. Right. So but there's yeah. a time and place. Like I tend to just, you know, I, I'll spill to a random stranger. See, yeah. That's I, I will. Like I have, I need to tell myself okay this is not you know this person doesn't need to know about that or whatever yeah but like being on either extreme is obviously not good 
you know, I, you don't want to just act like you have it all together all the time. You're going to intimidate everyone and it's a false front. Nobody has it all together. Right. At least I haven't met anyone yet. Right. There's definitely a happy medium of learning to share, but also when not to share. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We could read verse after verse in the Bible about the importance of friendship. Clearly it is something that God values and it's obviously worth the effort and I feel like as adults, sometimes friendships can be so much effort involved. It's not as easy as when you're just like in a high school with your same friends and you just kind of are in the same area. You're friends because of the situation you're in pretty much, you know, like you didn't really pick your friends. Yeah, circumstantial friends kind yeah. of. Um, but yeah, you had had a verse I thought that was good to share. Ecclesiastes 4.10. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls down and has no one to help them up. I've fell down many times in my life and my friends were always there to pick me up. So that verse means a lot to me. And I want to be the friend that's always there to pick up my friend when she falls down. Yeah, not like we should have transactional friendships, but you know, you put your money in the bank for a rainy day when you need to take it out and buy something. And I feel like that's what you're doing with when you invest in friendships. Yeah. You know, not that it's trying to be transactional, but it will come back around and it's a give and a take. When your friend's down, you might be up and vice versa. And so... If you can't really have anybody close to you to share in the hard times if you haven't been working on that ahead yeah. of time. And it's easier when you go through a hard time. It's easier to accept help graciously when you've also extended help and knows what it feels like when your help is accepted graciously or when it's not accepted graciously. So it definitely goes both ways. For sure. Um, I think before we get into it too much, I will say I'm a big proponent that friendship should strengthen your family and not weaken it. Friendship has its place and it's like proper place if you are neglecting your family so that you can have too much girl time, friend time, whatever. That's obviously not the place that we want right. to be in. There's definitely a place for it. But I feel like in this era of and society right now, I feel like there's a lot of loners out there and people that are just – they almost don't feel the need to reach out and make friends because they're getting that false feeling of friendship through – social media and things like that yeah. and it is a lot of work friendship is a lot of work yeah so I think our push today is for you to put in the effort and maybe take some of those acquaintance acquaintances that you have and turn them into more meaningful friendships mm -hmm. so should we just do like the 10 commandments of friendship and yeah. just kind of like number one you have thou shalt accept invitations what did you mean by that <laughs> um I just meant that if someone invites you over, they are putting themselves out there inviting you over and let's say like it's not really the best evening like you maybe had something you, you thought you might want to do or maybe it's a busy week or maybe you just like really don't feel like it. I'm just going to encourage you to accept the invitation if you at all can. Now, don't put your family at in jeopardy like you were saying. Don't overstress things unnecessarily. But if you at all can accept the invitation, I think it's very good to accept the invitation, whatever it may be, because once you reject an invitation, I know if someone rejects my invitation, I can be like, well, hmm, guess I won't invite them again. And I think once you... <laughs> it's so funny. I'm no. the opposite. I'm like, oh, I wonder why they don't want to hang out with me. Is it really because they already promised well, that to be mom-in-law? You know, yeah, or whatever. that too. And I'm just saying, reject your invitations with caution, realizing that they may be offended or they may write you off. And let's try also not to do that when someone rejects one invitation. But I just think if you if you genuinely have a heart to be a friend and to make friends, then you should not reject invitations if at all possible. How about this one? Thou shalt have social graces. Now, we both went to high school and we both took a speech class. And I realized how a lot of those things carry over into our real life friendships. And so I think sometimes if we're not used to people interacting as much like we go to church every Sunday at least plus there's all kinds of other social things throughout the week but I feel like some of us might be out of practice just with like the basic 101 of conversation you know pay attention to your spatial distance and awareness like don't be right up on their grill or whatever um, eye contact make eye contact but not excessive eye contact yes that's right that's true listening oh it's so hard to listen without thinking what you're gonna say yes next. Um, and also how to end a conversation and move on to another one, like at church or something. Yeah. How do you, do you have any tips for that on how to wrap, wrap it up? You know what I mean? I feel like you just keep like saying things back and forth and you just like can't get it done. Yeah. <laughs> I would say 
oh, I have to go check on the kids or I need to go make sure my boys aren't. Oh, you know. okay. Yeah, I don't make excuses at all. I'm just like, well, have a good week. Yeah. Um, we'll see you later. That's or, probably good too. <laughs> just wrap it up. I wouldn't necessarily um, lie. Like usually the boys do need checked yeah. on. I mean, let's, <laughs> let's be honest. But yeah, or sometimes like, oftentimes I feel like someone else comes up and you just kind of back off like, I don't yeah, know. At church, there's so many people around, you can easily just like slip out when it's convenient. And I don't think there's any, I mean, you have to leave eventually. Yeah. I don't know. I always feel awkward about this because I could like keep talking, but not really saying anything, if you know yes. what I mean. So I try, I think my script often looks like something like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Pause. Well, I hope your week goes awesome. I'll be thinking about you if they had shared anything yeah. to pray about. And um, yeah, I hope you have a good week. And so, just exit don't right. wait for them to say anything back really i yeah. mean they can as you're leaving but. is there a bad way to do it like i, I mean, mean I, the bad way is when you just keep when trying, you like, just don't want somebody they, you know you both want to get out of it and yeah. nobody's doing anything so to end it. i guess the lesson is how to tell when it's over yeah and then it doesn't really matter how yeah. you exit as long as you just that's exit some, that's something i'm really aware of because josh could talk to a, a tenure or whatever the quote oh. is like i'm like josh they probably want to talk to somebody else now. Or it's I over. Think, yeah. I think it was done five minutes ago. Like, we circled around here, you know, or whatever. Um, so I guess that's something I'm always like, are people like, am I boring them? Like, let's, I doubt it. Let's bow out before, you know, leave them wanting more yes. than the other way around. <laughs> yes, leave them wanting more. <laughs> so, yeah, thou shalt have some social graces. Do we want to talk about conversation skills at all? Like, the art of small talk? Um, actually, I have a couple different categories here of places you might meet people and how you can start a conversation. Um, cause I don't, honestly, I just keep thinking of the church scenario, but you know, anytime you're in like a big public setting, it's just easier to like not yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I guess at church I could just go gravitate towards the people I know the most, but I try to like think of some things I can say to the people that are around me or close by. So, um, if you meet somebody at church, some conversation starters might be, how was your week? Is this coming week looking very busy? You know, how was your morning? How are you doing? Um, pretty open-ended but they can share if they want and you're not like probing right um what did you say about the weather that wasn't necessarily related to church but just in general like we kind of joke about uh, talking about the weather but honestly like it's okay to talk about the weather and it's always appropriate like it's never not appropriate to talk about the weather is it i mean no it might be boring sure but i mean it, i wouldn't say it's, it's a not bad, like you're bringing up politics or a dead person it's or safe something. Yeah. it's not a bad conversation starter I mean, just say like, wow, I'm so grateful it's not raining today because we're doing this in the afternoon or wow, look at that beautiful sunshine. What are your plans to do to enjoy this beautiful day or whatever? I don't yeah. know. And we're talking about like acquaintances here. These are not real friendships yet. Yeah. And we're just like, I mean, they're, they're, you're friendly or whatever. Yeah. I often like to relate to their hobbies they might have or like I there's a friend from church I know she loves to run I'll be like oh did you get to go running this week at all you know stuff like that if you can remember like tuck away at least one fact about them um there's a friend I always talk to about her painting and her art and stuff and it's so fascinating and we're totally different ages and all of that Becky. but yes yes yeah, she's so talented <laughs> her, she's amazing um and yeah it's kind of like our go-to if I don't know and what is the point of small talk I think it sometimes is, it's a way to like vet people and if Sometimes if you feel connect safe on something if you feel safe and you might that's how I feel like a lot of friendships start with small talk they don't start with the deep heart probing bible school questions when you're gathered in a yeah. sharing group or something so it, it is a segue to something more valuable and more important it's important yeah yeah okay so if you run into somebody at the park this might be a, a scenario a lot of people run into and you want to say something to the other mom and you think like you'd love to talk to her but what can you even say um we were at the pool this past weekend and there was a family there. There was five boys and then a baby in the car seat. And I so badly wanted to ask if the baby was a boy also. And I'm pretty sure it was because they got him out later and I'm pretty sure it was also a boy. But I didn't want to be like offensive or like, I don't know. I froze. Like I didn't know what to say. I wanted to make a conversation because it was her five boys in the pool and my two boys was all boys. And I, I wanted to comment... But like she was busy with her kids and I was sitting there watching mine and I didn't say anything. And I kind of wish I would have at least said something. Yeah. But when that scenario, you know, comment only kids like, oh, my goodness, boys are so like rowdy or yeah. something like I just froze. Like I, did, I yeah. everything I would think of to say was like, oh, she could maybe would be offended by that, which I don't know why. 
Yeah. I would worry about that. Yeah, but. I don't know. Or you could say like, oh, so your boys all know how to swim, I see? Or yeah. you know, things like I could that. have said literally anything yeah. and I said nothing. <laughs> oh, I know. I know sometimes we freeze up. But okay, so somebody at the park or something, maybe comment um, a very generic, non-probing, non-nosy question about their children. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I don't know. What do I have written down? Do here? your kids play sports? Um, what's your dog's name? Oh, yes. Dogs are a good icebreaker too. Yeah. Um, so I see you have two kids or yes, yeah, something like that. Um, I don't know. I think moms kind of see moms like we know, like it's annoying yeah. when you hear somebody at the grocery store being like, wow, you have your hands full, but like moms that see that each other have lots of kids or whatever, you can't hardly say anything wrong probably yeah. because you're in the same situation. I like to tell mom she's doing a good job. I oh, that's I, a that means one. a lot. If someone says it to me, like just, Hey, you got this mama or, you know, I don't know. Just try to say something encouraging. And then, I don't know, I feel like in our society today, it's a lot of, like, come and go. Like, you're not really having conversations with your waitress very much and places like that. Um, it's function over friendship type of thing. Yeah. And it's not necessarily always bad. Like, that's a social cue thing. Waitresses are very busy. Um, but, like, sometimes I feel like, like there is a chance for you to maybe talk to the person who's swiping your groceries or something like that um and I I often like choke up and I'm not really sure what to say but at the same time you're not really building a friendship from that you're just being friendly so yeah um you know um our great aunt Janie okay she's she died now but do you know who I mean I think so short blonde hair from like green dragon no she worked at Weaver's store but she would have been like our great grandpa Louie her sister okay you know her anyway I worked at Weaver's store with her briefly and she would always say make it a great day Make it a great day as she would send the people on their way after she'd check them out. And people remember her for that because it wasn't have a great day, make it a great day. It was something different that not everyone said. And she was always so cheerful. And I don't know, she just had her little thing that she always said that she's remembered by now. And I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Or I know I'll often make a comment if somebody's checking me out at like the end of the day or like on a weekend or something. And I'll be like, oh my goodness, I'm sure your shift is almost over or something like that. And sometimes, you know, we end up talking about what we're doing that weekend or something. But, you know, it's quick come and go. But it's a great time to practice social interaction with like a very low failure rate. Like (laughs) who cares if you do make yourself feel like an idiot at the end? It's not the end of the world. Um, I just think the world needs a little more kindness. But that's not really fostering friendships, deep friendships. Let's say you have friends and you want to go deeper. I think a lot of us have pretty many friends and we just like to know how to get deeper with them or how to be more vulnerable. And I've noticed in my own life that friendships deepen when you're together more often, which Mm -hmm. sounds kind of like, oh my, you're just going to have a little click then or something. But it just seems to be that way. When you're together more, you can't just talk about the mundane things. You're going to be picking apart more real life. And you're just more comfortable. You're more casual and relaxed. And you get into deep conversations more. It's harder. And I feel like as adults, we do this so often, or at least I do. I spread myself kind of thin and have friends from here and friends from there. And like I'll see them once a month. And it's hard. Every time you see them, you're like reconnecting again. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I don't know if you have any tips for deepening friendships that you already have well I have one group of friends we started out as a play date group and a couple years ago I would have described that group as very casual like focused on the kids not necessarily talking about diaper rashes yeah and no butt not cream necessarily and- heart to heart <laughs> and then something definitely changed in the past couple years and I would pinpoint it to we started having girls nights I think and that was really bonding for us to be out without our kids we couldn't we didn't really talk about the kids then because I mean we still do sometimes But we weren't focused on the kids. We were focused on each other. And also another thing I would say is some of us went through some hard times. So we bonded over that, you know, encouraged each other, supported each other. And it led to deeper conversation. And then when one person went through a hard time, it led to other people sharing, you know, their stories or what they were going through. And then also I would say we started a group on WhatsApp where it's not daily conversation but weekly like we're we talk a lot and like share pictures and stuff and that also contributed to more deeper relationships I was gonna bring that up too like staying connected even across the not just the miles but also the days yeah you're not gonna see each other super often definitely that whole thing with not having kids around that's so hard but it's so worth it like not very often obviously if you're just gonna be abandoning your family like three nights a week or something to see your friends that's not probably very healthy but kind of regular connection yeah is so good without the children because I mean 
you can talk about four times as many things in half as much time. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and exactly. you're not starting a new conversation every five minutes because you got interrupted. Um, and I think that's the stage of life that I'm in. Maybe you're in too. Like young kids. Yeah, your friends will have really young kids. Yeah. yeah. They're just so much more needy and loud and rambunctious and helpless. And there's more distractions. Right. I think as kids get older, it's, it's a lot. Like they can just play at the park and you can supervise and make sure they're staying safe. Yes. And they're not really listening to your conversations and stuff. I also feel like if you have a smaller group, it's a lot more productive in the end. Yes. Um, people are a lot more willing to share with a few than with a group where you feel right. like you're giving a public speech right. or something. I'm part of a Bible study that's seven women and it's fine. It's fun. I enjoy it. Or is it six of us? But we're always in a public space. I feel like there's people that can listen in. We're like, we do it at a coffee shop. And it does almost feel like till we get through the lesson, there's not that much time to really – Sometimes it gets deep, but not a ton of time. So I feel like if we really, I mean, we're co- accomplishing our purpose of going through a, the Bible study book that we're doing. But at the same time, I feel like it's better to, it's not a safe space, I guess, in the middle of a loud, bustling coffee shop with right. a big group of people. And yeah, sometimes it's better just to go on a walk with a friend or two and the kids are running ahead. And What do you, you think know. the ideal number for a group is? I don't know. See, I love the big groups. It's fun. Like there's, oh, you talk to this person and yeah. that person. But um having relationships that really feed your soul I think like what four I think five okay because that's what my groups are but okay I I feel like if you have a group of three it's too easy for two people to go off and then the third person feels left out and is left with no one to talk to four I think four would be okay too but I think it's quicker to be like you know two and two and then you're not interacting all together and five I think is just the perfect number because if one person can't make it due to sick kids, you still have a reasonable group to go forward with your activities. Not everyone has to cancel then. So I think yeah. five is the magic number. So if you're going to form a friend group, look for four other women, I guess. Yeah. There you go. Which I have never done this, but I know some people who have like just contacted four people from their life and been like, I'm having you guys all over. I hope this isn't awkward. I think we would all connect really well, but it doesn't matter if we don't come over for you know biscotti and coffee that or sounds something. so fun yes I would love that. and they're still friends to this day the whole group they have one co- they had one common one friend common originally friend. and now they're and they're all from different places in life they're all about the same age and same stage of life but yeah I was like wow I don't need to form another additional group right. at the moment but that's really fun that's a good way to do it yeah so if you feel like you don't have a very rich friendship group or anything like that create one maybe um, or if you have another friend that also is looking for a group, she could invite two and you could invite two. That's going to be six. Yeah. Then, but or I've already um, gotten her sister, Joelle, and my friend. They both had a baby at the same time. And it's not like they both really needed friends or anything. But I was like, I knew they would hit it off. And they both had a kid at the same time. And so I randomly, I, they both knew that they were both coming over. But we invited both couples over at the same time. It was great fun. Like, yeah. it was awesome. And I don't think anything really came from that. But it could have. It's still fun for in the moment. Actually, yeah. some of my groups that have formed have formed just because somebody got a bunch of random friends together to go to the cabin. And they hit it off. And, you know, now you go to the cabin every year. Or camp, yeah. You know. So it can't really fail. Even if no. you have one good weekend or one good evening, that's enough. That's fine. But it is also a potential for something more. Yeah. Like I said, one of my groups got started from playdates. And the other one was, I think our original event was a cookie bake. Like, I think some of us weren't even married. And we just have this cookie bake annually. And, it, you know, it's something that we're going to always do every year. So then we make an effort to hang out throughout the year because you don't want to just have a friend that you see once a year, right? So now we have girls' nights. We don't have play dates as often with that group. But yeah, it was the cookie bake that brought us together. So there's an idea. Yeah. I think I struggle sometimes with feeling left out. Not I shouldn't because I have lots of friends that I'm trying to keep up with and everything. But I can identify with that feeling. And I feel I wouldn't put myself in that category really. But when you're an adult woman and you know about this group of people that always hangs out and you're not included or you would love to be a part of a certain you know group and you're not included you can either one get over it or two you can try to initiate something and you know start your own start group. your own group or um invite people over it's just it's it's hard to be vulnerable like that but yeah um 
feeling sorry for yourself does not solve the problem. Right. And being envious won't really solve the problem either. I mean, if you do feel envious, let that drive you to do something about it. But it probably is nothing personal. Like maybe they already have their perfect five group and they just don't have room for another person. They would love to include you, but it would just make things function less well. Like it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to mean that something's wrong with you or they don't like you for whatever reason. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying. I don't know. I feel that sometimes I feel guilty. Like we could include this person or that person, but oh my word, it's already so many. It's so hard to and know. And it's so easy to talk yourself out of being friendly to someone that, let's be honest, we all have different personalities yeah. and some click better than others. Right. And that's just natural. And sometimes it feels hard to want to invest in a relationship that you don't feel like it's going to go very far. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can still show hospitality and it can still be like a one-time thing or invite them and somebody else that you're already friends with. And that's just a challenge to myself at 30 to not be exclusive and too snobby and just like be set in my ways. Cause it's so much easier as you get older and time gets more and more precious yeah. to do that. Um, how about thou shalt not gossip? <laughs> okay. I'll Gina, try. You put this one I on the list. On. So I'll let you get going. You have a verse too, don't you? Yeah. Proverbs 16, 28 says, a perverse person stirs up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. And I just desperately do not want to be that person. But it is something I struggle with, oversharing or like, I just have like information that I feel like I need to share. And I just need to learn that if it's about someone else and they're not there, it is not always necessary or prudent to share that information, even if it is juicy. And especially if nobody it's wants like, to be the boring friend, right? You gotta right. Oh, I juicy love dit- to tidbits. share things, and especially if it's gonna get someone fired up. Like, it's shameful. It is, but like, yeah, it is so hard to hold my tongue, and I I want to do better. I have I feel like I have grown a lot, but it's something that is definitely a temptation for me. I know some people that are so good at just holding their peace and not talking about other people. They never talk about other people. And that it's not me. Yeah, so. it's good to be aware of, you know, our weaknesses and try to work towards them. I think that's something, there's a beautiful side of having very comfortable friends that you can just be yourself around. Yeah. And then there's like a more diabolical side that can come up if you start feeling like you can just share about anything. And pretty soon you're like husband bashing or, you know, griping about your children in a really negative way very often. Um, I think... You got, we got to guard against that specifically because that sets the whole tone of a group and it starts to be okay for or, you to talk yeah. that way. Sometimes people bond over that. Like, I'm not going to be sit here and say it's always, always wrong to talk about other people because I feel like we're human. It's, it's going to happen. You can talk about someone and it can be funny or whatever. It doesn't always mean it's like nefarious. And I think... It, oh, of course not. Like, did yeah. you hear about so-and-so who has a two-year-old, a one-year-old and is pregnant with twins or like yeah. whatever? It's not like yeah. you're gossiping about that person it's just like oh my word that's a crazy or like maybe someone like says something that like hurt you I I don't think it's ever wrong to like share your experiences or you know I'm not gonna be like so pious and say that it's you can't talk about people ever because you know people are gonna see right through that but to bond over that and to make that the only thing you ever talk about is putting other people down I think that's that's really bad and if your friends feel safe bashing other people to you that probably says something about your character too um, I have some friends that I feel call me to a higher standard mm-hmm. just with their example. And so it's like, you know, you would never, and I feel like I've gotten so much better. Like this, that whole attitude has really not permeated my, our friendships, like in my adult years, but I can remember as a teenager and stuff. It's just hard. Like when you can put somebody else down for some reason, you think you're putting yourself up, mm-hmm. which is so not true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, be careful about the tone of your friendships and, um, when you're so comfortable around friends, I think sometimes we can overshare or we can say things that maybe we should just kept that to ourselves and our husband or something. Yeah. Um, and I think it's totally okay to be humble enough to, you know, message the WhatsApp group later and be like, I regret talking about this in this way. Um, and I'm going to try doing better. So one, it's telling yourself that you're going to do better. And two, it's kind of setting the tone a little yeah. bit. Um, my friends and I were recently together at the beach. And then my one friend shared later, like, she's sorry she was talking about her church in such a negative light. And it didn't really bother me at the time because we were just rehashing church issues. And, mm-hmm. you know, in the Mennonite circles, there's always something happening in somebody's church that we're trying yeah. to work through. And it's sometimes good struggles and good working through stuff. Yeah. But sometimes it's the tone. And, like, are you coming across disrespectful or anyway, I just appreciated that she was humble enough to say that. And it's like, oh, yeah, let's all try to do 
better at being honest but speaking the truth and love right. and I think that's the point of friendship so to rehash and talk through and figure out you know like I don't think it's wrong to talk about church issues and no. problems as long as we're not bashing specific people or being ungracious and yeah that's something I recent well recently and distant I don't know how to say it long time no once upon a time in the, in the past year or two two year, two to three years maybe I've really grown in I would find myself talking negatively about my church and I feel like the reasons may have been valid but I felt like that's all I was doing was speaking negatively about my church and there's so many positive things to say about my church I love it and the thing was like if I'm going to speak negatively about my church so often why do I even go there so I, I asked myself that if I'm constantly only have negative things to say about my church why do I go there so I started thinking about why I go there and it totally changed the way I speak about my church like now I mean yes like you said we do discuss issues sometimes but like I find myself saying way more positive things about my church than negative just because I challenged myself to question why I even go there in the first place and I was easy I was very easy I very easily came up with a lot of reasons why I go there. So I need to, yeah, just be reminded to share those, talk about those positive things rather than focusing on like the one negative thing. Yeah, very true. And it's not, that's not really talking about friendships, but it's talking about setting a tone of your friendships, you know? Yeah. Um, let's get into a fun topic here. Types of events to foster friendships. So let's oh, yeah. say you want to, now this is fun because you can just invite a group of tight knit friends that you know already over or you can really make this random, especially if it's centered around an activity. It can be really random groups and it can still be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so let's just get into some of those. We can just spit fire some of them off. I have down, you know, do a fun walking play date or park play date. Um, my friends got together one time and we did a vision board party. That's probably better with a little bit closer friends. I'm like dying laughing thinking about my friends doing the vision board party. <laughs> oh I mean, I can see your friends doing that. Oh just, yeah, it was super fun. Yeah, mine would laugh me out of town and if I suggested that. a that. goal or two that we wanted to do better in the yeah, next year. that's good. I think it's great. I just, it's not for, not for us. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I, had, I mentioned Cookie Bake. Recently, we invited a family over for dinner. We don't know them super well. It's one of Eric's coworkers. So get your families involved. Have a whole family over for dinner. I think that's really fun. And you're not like dividing, you know, yeah. girls night, guys night. You can hit it both in the same night. Right. I want my friends to do pottery painting, to go to a place where, and they say, oh, we're not artistic. We're not good at it. And I don't really care if they're not good at it. You can slap some paint on a mug and we'll have fun doing it. So I'm still working on that, getting them to do that with me. Yeah. I think that's fun. Birthday parties is another one. And this does not even have to be anybody you know super well. Uh, a lady from our church she came over from another country and it was her 30th birthday and I was like we got to do something for her she if her family's not around it's her 30th birthday this is a big deal and I was thinking one of two ways how do I want to do this one I could invite all the ladies from church and whoever suits and makes it wants to make it work we can go to a coffee shop and give her gifts and just have a good time or I could just randomly pick a couple ladies that are kind of in the same age and stage of life and we could just have four of us that really don't know each other that well but we're there to celebrate this new girl's 30th birthday and it could maybe develop into something and that's the one I really kind of wanted to do but just with the situation of us being gone on a trip and stuff I decided to open it up to anybody who wanted to come and so it was a pretty big group of like 15 ladies but that was still fun too and you can do the birthday party thing in so many different ways and it doesn't have to be like decorating with parties and streamers or making the person feel awkward um, right. But we also do these tomorrow. I have a 30th birthday party. It's a ladies' morning out. We all have to get babysitters, which is so much effort, but it's always worth it in the end. And you only turn 30 once. And we're going to be um, actually going to a cute little place shopping, going for lunch. And then I think some of them are going to an escape room, those that it suits after that. But yeah, there's so um, many different things you can do to celebrate birthdays. We're already planning. We are all had our 30th birthdays. I think all my friends turned 30. So we're already talking about what we're going to do for our 40th. Wow. we got some You're, big plans. My <laughs> friends are not, we're not, we have zero patience in waiting to our 40. We're already thinking what we're going to do as soon as the last person turns 30 here next month. We're like, should we do a book club? Should we do like themed parties and everybody takes a month? Or like, what do we want to do? We're like, we got to keep this going. Yeah. Because our friendships have grown in leaps and bounds. Something else I heard of a lady doing was she gathered random people, which I feel like could come across as being exclusive, but she picked random people at different age levels at her church and started a random Bible study. So maybe you want to um, start a Bible study and 
invite people until you have enough that said yes and you can kind of start bonding over a certain book or a bible study that you're doing and it can grow from there um you could do a book club i know people who do like meal like they get together and make meals together things like that um i just think it's less vulnerable to be like instead of saying i don't have any friends Do you want to be friends right <laughs> to say like that doesn't really work you have kids i have kids let's meet at the park or yeah. we both like to run you know bond over something active at first and then over time you're like both there at the coffee shop with your heads in together and you're like whispering and talking together yeah. and you're like soul sisters you know yeah it doesn't start out that way usually so yeah there's so many different I mean we could go on and on about that thou shalt not monetize thy friendships amen <laughs> oh I think this is something I just came to my mind um don't make friendships under false pretenses yes basically I guess is what I'm trying to say um I've seen it happen maybe this is more of a Lancaster County thing but I feel like I don't there's think a so. lot of people MLM type Things we need circling. to clarify what MLM is. Some people were confused when oh, we mentioned yeah. it before. MLM stands for multi-level marketing. You may have heard it referred to as direct sales. It's it's a a way a company is set up where I was thinking we should do a whole podcast about this sometime. Yes. You've been part of like three different MLMs. I you? have not, excuse me. <laughs> one, one solitary MLM in the history of me. Okay. Yeah. One. But anyway, it's the way the company is set up where they have representatives who sell the product for them. You, you buy it from your rep. You don't buy it straight from the company. But I think the way that they make their sales is through network marketing, which is basically meeting people and then making the sale. Right. And so don't ruin your friendships over an MLM. And I'm not saying you can't start an MLM. I myself have chosen not to be a part of one. Um, I just have seen it can be a very dangerous pitfall into ruining friendships because yeah. – you all of a sudden are trying to reconnect with random people that you knew for five minutes, five years ago. And it always seems to start out with, oh my goodness, we have this in common or I haven't seen you in a while or let's meet up. And if you're starving for friendships, I can really feel exploitive. Yeah. Predatory. Kind of. Yeah. It, when, when you think you're there to, oh, maybe you can make a friend. This happened to my husband, I guess. It just kind of feels kind of raw yet. But yeah, he was like met up with a friend that he hadn't seen in so long. They were talking and whatever. And here... He was just there trying to make a sale. And Ouch. after he said no, never heard from him again. Um, I think that's a really bad way to make a name for yourself. Yeah, so I agree. If you have a product you believe in, it should sell itself, right? I don't know. Yeah. Um, not that there's not actions I guess you need to take. I mean, but I could share my experience, but do we want to do a whole other episode or should I just? You know, it is a sticky conversation. And I feel like if we're going to talk about it, we should really unpack it a little bit more because yeah. there's two sides. It's very the nuanced. And, and I just, I don't want to come across as putting someone down who is in an is working for an MLM because sometimes like people really feel like they have no other choice maybe they're just like desperate to make some money or, or they maybe feel passionate people, I know there are some people who are very fulfilled and you know they're actually making money and they're not being predatory and they're handling it very well but I feel like those they found people, friends through it a lot of times I feel like they had a platform before they started selling it maybe that's not always the case but it's pretty easy if you already have, you know, 20,000 followers on Instagram to start selling an MLM and not do it in a predatory way because you already have the audience. But if you have 100 friends on Instagram and that's your only people to go to, you're going to have to harass every single one of those 100 friends and you're going to get nowhere. I just wanted to bring that up in a fact of if you don't have any friends and you're wondering why, just have you been doing that? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And if before you let someone pressure you into joining an MLM in the name of friendship, just don't. Just use caution. You know, whenever you're spending money associated with a friendship, I, I just, I don't know. Yeah. Money and friends just... It, it makes it sticky. I know. That was one thing actually that we discussed before we started our podcast. Like how do we want to handle the whole financial thing of it all? Because if something would blow up or something would go south or one of us would get canceled or like, you know, all the things, how Sometimes would that Sometimes if I be? start thinking about it too much, I'm just like, I can't do it. Like I need to just, I can't, I need to stop. Yeah. I think we're both hopefully mature enough that if we did have some hard feelings or something, we would be like, okay, that's over and done with. Now we're moving on. And even if we are spitting mad at each other, which has happened before. I mean, I can think yeah. of many times that you were furious with me and I was furious with you. And but our husbands aren't going to let us not be friends because they're not going to want to not golf together. So I feel like we're stuck. At the end of the day, blood is thicker than water. It really is. And money. Yeah. So we're family first. So yeah, yeah, I know. And I think we both 
know that going into it that you know we're family and friends first before business partners and that's going to come first but it is definitely yeah. something that we keep I think we both think of all the negative we're trying to think of all the negatives and trying to get ahead of them yeah but yeah exactly it's it's sticky when you mix those all together it is. for sure so we talked a lot here I hope we got you thinking a little bit um I don't know where you find yourself with too many friends that you feel like you need to you know, whittle down to a core group or to deepen a few of those friendships. Or maybe you feel like you're starting from scratch and you really have no one besides maybe a sister-in-law or your mom or something and you really want to try to reach out. I hope we gave you some courage today. Yeah. Some practical pointers. And yeah, you can just go out there and find your people because it, it really... They're out they're, there. Yeah, they're out there somewhere and there's no substitute behind a screen or on social no. media or mm-hmm. anything like that. So it's something we definitely believe in. God definitely values friendship as well and we hope that you find it in your life so thanks so much for being here and we'll see you in the next one bye Bye.